Translations and Reflections, Level 6 National Curriculum, Grade D, GCSE. I'm going to start with translations, um, which is a transformation. Um, it's probably the easiest of the transformations because all you're doing with a translation is sliding the shape in a particular direction. So if I've got this um, rectangle, let's just place this on top of the original, and we're told to trans do a translation of 5 minus 8. These two numbers in the translation, this top number is the x direction. So we're going horizontally. And this is the y direction. So up and down. And when we have a positive number, that means to go to the right if it's in the x direction, or up if it's in the y direction, just like the coordinates are on the coordinate axis. And then if it's negative, we would go um, to the left in the x direction or down in the y direction. Now we're told to translate this shape at 5 minus 8. So we need to go 5 to the right, so the top direction, positive 5. So if we take the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right, and then minus 8 in the y direction will be down 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now you could do that with a piece of tracing paper just like I've done there, or um, you should be able to just count out. If we take one corner of the shape and count it out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then down 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And remember that's that corner, so maybe put a cross on it, and then draw the shape again from that corner, and we should have it in a perfect position. Now, so that's moving something using a translation, so that gives us a lot of help when we've actually got it all written out there. But what happens if we have to say what a translation is? So if we're starting with that, the shape, let's actually do the shape x. So we're starting from x, and we want to write down the translation that takes us from x to a. So what would be the translation? What would be the vector? How far across do we need to go? How far up and down? So we are moving, um, we we'll always go across first, one, two, three, four to the right to get it in the right, the right position horizontally, and then one, two, vertically. So we moved it four to the right, and two up, so we put four, two. Um, if we were going, from x to d, for example, slightly trickier one, we'd actually have to move to the left, one, two, three, four, five, to get it underneath, and then up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'd go five to the left, to go from x to d, we would go 5 to the left, which is minus 5. We want to go to the left, and then we're going to go um, up 11. Again, these can be done by just picking one point and thinking about where's that point going, where it needs to go from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 up. So that's translations for you. Always described by the word translation, and a vector which is like a, like a coordinate, no commas or anything, just a bracket with the x direction and the y direction, one above the other. Okay, now we're going to look at reflections. Now reflections themselves are fairly fairly low level skill. If you just drew a line and had a shape and you had to reflect it, it's not a very high level skill. But as soon as you start to introduce more complicated things like um, coordinate grids and maybe reflections in the equation of a line. So if, say, for example, I want to reflect in the line x equals minus 1. Reflect in x equals minus 1. That makes this question much trickier because you have to know where x equals minus 1 is. It could be this horizontal line that goes through minus 1 or this vertical line or it could be you know, difficult to figure that out. So it's important that you um, know where things are. So um, x equals lines are vertical lines 
and they go through the number that it says, so it's minus 1. So this is going to be x equals minus 1, this vertical line going through minus 1, and that's the line we're going to reflect in. Now if we had a bit of tracing paper, we could trace that on there and then just flip it over and draw it on the other side. Um, but um, for this, I'm just going to count out the squares. So we've got 1, 2, 3 squares that way to the line, so we need to count 1, 2, 3 on the other side. Now a very common mistake here is to draw on the line um, or just to ignore the line and just reflect it in the y-axis and just count two squares and then two squares and put it here or something. Um, but that's why this is a level six question, not a level four or five question, because you have to use the specific line you're given. This point will be underneath that point, and then this is two squares away, but on the other side. So we end up with that triangle there. Let's draw it in green again. There's our reflection in the line x equals minus 1. Now we could get a really tricky one, we've got a diagonal reflection and I would encourage you if you've got a diagonal reflection to draw on some construction lines like we did for the transformation, like we do for an enlargement. Um, but for a reflection we need to draw lines that are at right angles to the original um, line of reflection. Um, which can be quite difficult, but this is just diagonal lines so it's going to go through um, corners of the squares, be very accurate to go through the corner squares in the opposite direction. And then you can just count out how far you need it to go. So this one is one diagonal and a half a diagonal. So we go half a diagonal and one. And that would put that point over here. This point again is one and a half, so we're going to come out to here. And then we can join that up as one big line. But this these two are where we need to uh, figure out where they're going to go. So let's just draw some more what you doing blue this time because it's green background. A yeah, nice long diagonal line going through the corners. This is the bit I want to go through, so let's go through that point there. Through those diagonals. Let's try and make sure they go through all the diagonals. Okay, and then we can just count out the squares. So this one is one, two, three diagonals, one, two, three diagonals across here. And this one is one, two, three, four and a half. So half, one, two, three, four to here. Once we've got all those squares, uh, those corners, we can join them up to form the triangle that's been reflected. So those two go to there, join it to there, then here, and then over to here. And now we have our reflection perfectly positioned on the other side of the diagonal line. Whenever we're doing transformations, we just need to move the corners of the shape. So this reflection needs to be two squares on this side. And again, this corner needs to be two squares on this side. And this one is four squares. We need to come back four squares.